months, a 40-year-old stay-at-home dad was recently found dead in his home. The case was reported to the police by his wife, Molly Phillips. After examination, we suspect Poe to have drowned himself in the bathtub while drunk. Based on the empty bottle of brandy next to his body, investigation is still underway. Ah, Miss Phillips. Please, come in and have a seat. All right. Thank you for your help, Dr. Sullivan. No need to be formal, Molly. Call me Danforth, or Dan, whichever you prefer. All right. Dan. Well, I'd first like to say I'm very sorry to hear about Poe's death. He was a great friend, and it's sorry to hear him go. I'm sure you and your family must miss him dearly. It's... it's all right. But it isn't really, is it? Well, it all just happened too suddenly. If you don't mind me asking, how did it all happen? Okay. Um... I was coming home from work Friday evening, and I was putting the groceries in the fridge. I called for Poe and the kids to help me. He should have picked them up by then, but he didn't come down, nor did the kids. Go on. I tried calling him, but he left his phone sitting on the table. I figured he must have been out late grabbing the kids, so I didn't think much of it. Then I. I went to the bathroom to wash up, and, and uh, It's okay. It must have been hard to see, wasn't it? Well, he was sitting with us that morning at the table, and, and now... It's okay. Let's take a few deep breaths. just doesn't make any sense. The police said he drowned himself over a bottle of brandy, Dan. Brandy! He barely ever drinks, let alone an entire bottle. And I don't even know how he got one into the house in the first place. Molly, how well do you know Poe? I've known him almost my entire life. But how much do you really know about him? He's a stay-at-home dad, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And you always come home late from work, don't you? Yes. You don't know much at all, do you? But he's my husband. I love him. Of course I know him. Even in a relationship, no matter how close we are, there are still secrets that we hide from each other. And you know it's true, Molly. But alcohol? How could you possibly hide an alcohol addiction from your wife? Have you noticed any abnormal behaviors from Poe? No, not really. Why? Does he use an irregular amount of mouthwash, perhaps? I mean, he does use mouthwash, but I don't see anything wrong with that. It's very common for alcoholics to use mouthwash to hide their alcohol breath. Does he do chores around the house? Perhaps a bit too often? He's always working on something. Gardening, cleaning, fixing things. Just recently, he fixed my car in the garage, but I don't see anything wrong with that. Have you ever thought that Poe might be hiding alcohol around the house? What? <laughs> he wouldn't. I know he wouldn't. It's very likely, Molly. In fact, if the police had searched the house further, they would probably find a few bottles in the shed, the garden, the garage. But why? Why would he do that? Because he's an alcoholic, and he can't control himself. Perhaps he wanted to hide his drinking problem from you, because he's afraid you'd get mad. Okay. I suppose this all could be a Bible plan? But even so, I still refuse to believe it. Poe was such a happy guy. If you ever saw him, 
you would never believe that he could ever be sad. Unlike that Edgar Allan Poe guy that always talked about death and stuff like that. Ah, you see, Molly. That's the thing with people who suffer from depression. Oftentimes, they're very good at hiding their true emotions. They may live a perfectly normal life on the outside, but may carry an overwhelming sadness on the inside. Your husband could have been putting on a facade this entire time. But... It all makes sense. Your husband was a secret alcoholic whose mental health slowly deteriorated until one day it all came crashing down. I... I... It's a hard truth to face. Perhaps you can ponder over it at home, and we can meet again in a future session. All right. Thank you for your cooperation, Molly. I'm sure we'll be able to come to terms with your husband's death in no time. I sure hope so, Dan. I really do. Where did you get these? Ah, these are mine. I just got them recently. That's strange, because I'm pretty sure I sewed these for Poe. Look, the stitching came undone, and Poe didn't know how to fix it, so he just tied it in a knot and tucked it in the cuffs. Well, I found those lying around in my office, so I assume someone left it here as a gift. You know, I, I bet Poe left them here after one of our therapy sessions. Wait. Poe took therapy sessions? Yeah. Um, once per week we would come here and he would discuss treatment plans for his depression. Well, we were making great progress, but I guess we were a bit too late. He never mentioned any of that to me. And no billing came out for therapy sessions on our shared account. Well, I let him off the hook when it comes to payments. He's a family friend after all, and I feel really bad about his mental health. I can't believe this. I'm just gonna call Juliet and check all the- uh, That won't be necessary. I just wanna see how often he was in. Juliet's not here at work today. She's still upset of her post-death, so I let her stay at home with the kids. I don't remember Poe and Juliet being that close. And she's a really strong woman. She came to work the day after her mother's funeral. Well, you see, you seem strangely nervous, Dan. First, you have my husband's gloves. Then, you tell me that he took therapy sessions out of nowhere. And now you're trying to prove me wrong. What are you hiding, Dan? You just couldn't keep your mouth shut, could you? What that you bastard! You dared to call your husband was a disgrace to society! He deserved to die for what he did! What are you talking about? I came for a drink after work with a few friends. And then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw none other than your husband sitting and drinking with my wife. The brandy in my glass turned sour as I wanted to smash it to pieces. That can't be. I wanted to say the same thing if I hadn't saw it with my very own eyes. It was absolutely disgusting. Juliet would come home and pretend like nothing ever happened. Well, I wanted to make sure it never, ever happened again. Dan. You. I gave him a bottle of brandy, the same drink that he had with her last night. His alcohol tolerance must be pretty low, passed out just after a couple of drinks. Though some sleeping pills definitely helped. Dan! He made my job a lot easier for me, too. Passed out right next to the toilet he puked in. I couldn't stand seeing him like that, so I gave him a bath to wash away his sins. I made sure to rinse the bottle a couple of times to get rid of the drug traces, and then toss it next to him. I'm sure he'll need it with him in hell. And you know how the police didn't get my fingerprints? Dan, please. Good work, Mr. Detective. But I'm afraid you've heard too much. Tell your husband I said hi. 